Hello, and welcome to The Laddercast, where we teach you how to leverage your assets to change your life. I'm Sorsha Porter, and in 2016, I bought my first home, which completely changed the trajectory of my life. I turned that property into a business, a trip around the world, a new career, and quadrupled my household income. And now I'm a real estate agent licensed in Oregon and Washington. And I'm Shannon McAllister. After finishing college with a degree in finance, I was in a job I hated but couldn't quit because I wasn't making enough money. I signed up for a class to learn about mortgages taught by a real estate investor. 17 years later, I'm a nationally licensed mortgage lender, homeowner, and investor myself. We aim to educate how getting on the property ladder by owning just one home can change lives. It changed ours. Hello, and welcome back to the Laddercast. Today, we are talking about VA loans. Woo, VA loans. We're big fans of VA loans here. Absolutely. But VA loans are awesome if you are someone who is looking to build a property portfolio. Mm -hmm. Um, If you have a VA loan eligibility, you should really look into it. They are for primary residents only, but they're a great tool to leverage in order to eventually own more than one property. Right. If that's where you're headed. It's it's a great way to get on the property ladder if you have the eligibility and that tool available to you to get on the property ladder for a primary residence to live in. Or if you're looking to build a little portfolio, this is a great way to do it. And unfortunately, there isn't, I think, a lot of education for our service members about their VA loan benefit, like when they are in the military and when they first get out, at least in my experience. I can confirm that. When someone separates from the military, they are not given training on or even if you're in the military, you are eligible for a VA loan if you are in the military under the right circumstances. You don't have to be separated in order to be VA loan eligible. But the point of that is the VA loan, or excuse me, the VA is not giving training to service members about the VA home loan benefit. They say you have the benefit, but they aren't really explaining what it is and how it works and why it is so great. And that's what we want to talk about today is what the VA loan is, how you can use it, and debunking some myths around it, as well as talking about a mutual client that we have who has used his VA loan at the age of 32 to get three properties of which have five individual residences between the three of them Mm -hmm. and is basically living for free because of his property investments. So without further ado, let's start with, Shannon, what is a VA home loan? The VA Home Loan is a federally sponsored mortgage program for service members, either current military members or separated military service members, to provide primary housing. It is a home loan for your primary residence. It is one of the biggest perks of being a service member that, as we said before, isn't discussed enough and isn't... Service members aren't being educated enough on it, on how it works, why it works, and why it's so great. Yeah. Um, so it is a loan to buy a primary residence, which can be one to four units. You can purchase a single family home, a duplex, triplex, or fourplex with your VA home loan with zero money down and zero monthly mortgage insurance. That's pretty cool. That's the biggie right there. No down payment, no monthly mortgage insurance. Which means the VA loan is one of the most affordable loan products on the market. Absolutely. Ab- now, it is one of the most affordable. However, let's put that into perspective. If you are putting no money down, your mortgage loan is higher than if you were putting money down, thus your payment's probably going to be higher, right? So we need to do that math to make sure that all of the pieces align so that way your monthly payment feels good and is right for you. But down payment for most people is the biggest barrier to home ownership. Yep. And with a VA home loan, you are not obligated to put money down. That's pretty cool. That is excellent. I mean, that means oh. if you uh, get an agent who can negotiate your closing costs or prepaids and prepaids for you, you could get into a home virtually for free. Absolutely. That's pretty neat. Absolutely. And also along those lines regarding closing costs and prepaid expenses, the VA home loan allows one of the largest credits for that. You can ask the seller for a quite considerable sum to go towards your closing costs. Cool. It allows you to ask for a higher amount than other standard mortgage loans do. So that gives you some playing room with which maybe you buy down your interest rate to lower your mortgage payment if you're able to negotiate a larger size credit. 
above and beyond the total sum of your closing costs. That's really awesome. I think it's one of the coolest things. I it, It's one of those things that as someone who loves property investment, I love helping people find houses for because it is such a cool product and it's such a good opportunity to get into property investment. And like, like you said, it's one of the biggest perks of being a service member. It is. And Let me give you an example here. Last month, my, my timeline is off in my head here in the last couple of months. I helped a wonderful girl currently service member. She was being relocated and the area she was being relocated to rent were high comparable to the house prices of houses. So we used her VA home loan with zero money down, got her into a single family home, which had a bedroom for each of her girls, a yard for them to play in. And the sum of that mortgage payment was about the same as if she was going to go rent a two bedroom apartment. And because she was an active member, I'm betting she gets a housing credit that helps pay her mortgage. Yes. And we did that math. We knew what her Housing allowance was going to be in that area, and we made sure that her mortgage payment was within her housing allowance stipend. So that way, her standard base pay was her money, and her housing allowance covered her mortgage payment. That's so cool. Yep. That she is essentially living for free mm-hmm. in a home that she's getting equity for. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Oh, I love it. Yep. It gives me nerdy investor chills. <laughs> um, What are some other things other than what an awesome product it is that people should know about the VA loan benefit? Yeah, there are some very specific nuances to using it and to understanding how it works to make sure you're using it correctly. Um, Your house needs to be in pretty tight and right condition. You don't have, it doesn't have to be new and shiny, but it has to be tight and right. There it can't be a major fixer, no major life, health, safety issues, anything along those lines. So you're not buying a DIY fix-it situation with a VA loan? Nope. This is a loan program sponsored by the government to provide housing to our military members. They need to provide safe, clean housing for service members and their families. So it needs to be ready to go. And that's why it's really important when you do a VA loan product that you have a realtor who is familiar with the requirements of said product. Because what you can buy with a conventional loan is different. Mm -hmm. than what you can buy with a VA loan. Correct. And the VA loan requirements may vary around the country, depending on what's going on in those areas. For example, in our area here in the Northwest, they are concerned with points of water entry. We get rain here and they don't want water features indoors in your house. Yeah. So So they're real strict about things like chipped paint, mm -hmm. improperly sloped gutters and, and or roofs roofs with any sort of potential problem. Yep. So that's a big one. I, you know, with a conventional loan, you can finance a a low down payment conventional loan that needs some roof work or has chip paint on the exterior. You can't do that with VA. So you have to make sure that the seller is willing to either bring the property to the status that the VA will accept the, the mortgage on that property, Mm -hmm. or you need to more, which is a better option. Look for things that'll finance. Mm -hmm. Which is why you must choose a realtor who knows what they're doing and who has experience with these things. Because not every realtor knows the difference yeah. between a conventional home and a VA eligible home. Yeah, particularly here in the Pacific Northwest, where most of our vets who move here are are vets. They're not active service members. We only have one base close to us, and it's not a huge one. Correct. So we don't have a ton of service members versus areas in, of the country, like, for example, Colorado Springs, where there are three military bases in this in that area. More it, realtors are much more familiar with sure. the VA loan and the benefits and requirements. So just things to think about. If you're a vet and you live in an area not close to a military base, you're going to want to be careful to seek out a realtor who has VA loan experience because they are likely to be fewer and further between. Sure. One other major gotcha to using this loan program is the VA's requirement regarding family status and purchasing a home. The VA home loan is intended to provide primary housing for military members and their families. And they define that in a very specific way. And while we acknowledge here at the latter cast that families come in all shapes, sizes, and forms, this is specifically the requirements of the VA loan program and doesn't necessarily represent our views or how we see other people's families. Right. Uh, and so what they're trying to do is ensure that you're not committing some sort of loan fraud Correct. at the end of the day. you If you and your partner are purchasing a home, you must be legally married. And that is the only way to ensure that 
this loan is being used for the intended purpose. If you are not legally married, we can't guarantee that you and your neighbor down the block aren't getting together to buy a house on the government's dime, essentially. And the idea basically being that we're not taking advantage of a product intended for our service members and their families. And this is the way that the VA decided that they would gauge that by is by is their marriage certificate. Mm -hmm. So married partners can jointly get a VA loan together using the military member's VA loan eligibility. Which means you can count both incomes. Mm -hmm. towards both of your loan. incomes go towards the loan to help you qualify for the payment. If you are unmarried partners or you are somebody who is, if you're buying a home with another, if you are the military member and you are buying a home with another person who is not your spouse, the mil the government is not going to sponsor the non-veterans portion of the loan, thus requiring a down payment on that person's half. There's a little bit of magic math that happens behind the scenes, but the short of it is in that scenario, if you, a military member, are purchasing a home with a non-spouse co-borrower, the minimum down payment moves from 0% to 12.5%. And that's because a lot. It is a lot. And that is more than a conventional mortgage. And so uh, that in that scenario, we are likely to run numbers on other mortgage products to see which pencils out best. Yep. And I think that that's, that's just a big call out, especially with like if a lot of our peers are not married and don't want to get married. It's, so it's just a thing you need to pay attention to if you're wanting to take advantage of your VA loan benefit. You still have zero mortgage insurance. You know, you still have the, the perks of it, of having that VA loan. But if you are wanting to buy with a partner and have their income help you qualify, that's a big one to pay attention to. Yeah. So these are things we look at up front and make decisions about if that status happens to apply to you. Also, if you're listening to this and it makes you get married to your partner afterwards so you can use your VA loan and home benefit, we would be interested to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know if anybody's like, well, we've been putting this off, but this is a practical reason to do it. <laughs> just curious. All right, but, but don't also... Oh, oh, yeah. Right don't rush into marriage if that's not what you actually want to do. <laughs> We're not recommending that. But if you've been like, man, we'll do it, I'd, I'd be interested to hear. All right. Send us a note if that's you. Yeah. Let's talk about it. And then what are some myths, myths. about the VA home loan? Because there are many. It is it is steeped in much mystery, I feel like. Yeah. And, and it comes down to the fact that service members aren't educated on this and what yeah. it really means and how to use it best and to their advantage. Uh, myth number one is that you can only use it once. That's inaccurate. This is a lifetime benefit. You can reuse this VA home loan benefit many times over. That's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, myth number two is it's only for your first home purchase. That's inaccurate also. You can be your 70th home. It could be your first home or anywhere in between. And that's okay. As long as you have eligibility to use, you may use it. Now, can you have more than one at a time? You can. It is tricky. It doesn't happen often. It is a possibility, however. So the, I've said it 700 times already in the 15 minutes we've been talking about it, but this is for a primary residence home purchase. So if you are getting a VA loan, it is for your primary residence. Yep. Pretty hard to have two primary residence home loans at the same time because you can't have two primary residences. Yep. So there, however, there are circumstances wherein potentially you've been relocated or you are separated from service and moving away. There are a lot of calculations to be done. It's not as easy as I'm moving a thousand miles away. I need to get a new VA home loan. There is something called eligibility, and that is a number. Each service member is given an eligibility number. And there are calculations done with home purchases that use up that eligibility number. So in order to get a second home under the right circumstances, you must have eligibility left to apply to that second home. And so not common technically possible. Cool. So potentially, and I feel like this is going to be more common with service members who are either re using the loan while they're active duty and getting restationed. And it's going to be more common among service members in less expensive parts of the country. Correct. Because if you are purchasing a higher priced home, you're going to use all of your eligibility towards to cover yeah, that like higher price. People, people here are using their whole benefit for the most part, for the most part. So yep. And what else? Uh, we have a client who has used his VA loan a couple of times and has bought himself several properties with it, which is pretty neat that we wanted to share with you. Yep. His name is Chase. You've heard us talk about him before. He's my husband's best friend since childhood, <laughs> and we love to talk about him on the podcast, and he loves it when we talk about him. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you, Chase. Thanks, Chase, for being our regular case study. But he has he's done a lot in yeah. his 32 years of life to uh, yeah. acquire a lot of properties, and he's been really smart about it. He's so, been working hard and making a plan and following through with the yeah, plan. Yeah, It's quite fun to watch. It is really cool to watch. We give him a hard time about a lot of things, but we are wildly proud of, of him. <laughs> um, but first thing Chase did is he used his VA home loan benefit to get on the property letter by buying a duplex. He did. With zero money down. So cool. This duplex he bought, it's a nice duplex. It's in an area called Forest Grove, which has grown a lot since he purchased it. Mm -hmm. And initially he lived in one side and he rented the others to tenants and he lived basically for free. And then a few years later, he's like, okay, I'm going to refinance this duplex. And he refinanced it when interest rates were quite low. And so what he did technically was he refinanced his mortgage out of the VA home loan. He then took a conventional mortgage on that duplex, thus freeing up all of that eligibility from his VA home loan benefit, making him fully eligible to use that on another home purchase with zero down. So then he went and bought his next house, which this time he decided to get a single family home. And he rented a room to a friend and a room to his brother. And... They lived happily there for, I think, two years? A few years. Yeah, yeah. a few, couple of years. And then he said, okay, well, I, I want to do this again, and I want to buy a duplex. And in this case, interest rates were not as good um, as they were with his VA benefit, and he re decided he was going to go with a conventional loan for the third one. Correct. In that single-family home, the second home, he stayed in that VA home loan. His VA home loan eligibility is tied up in that single family home, that second house, because rates were higher. It didn't make sense to refinance out of that to free up his VA eligibility to use it to purchase the third house. So instead, he kept the VA home loan with that second house. So that he could cash flow it. Mm -hmm. And then saved up savings and purchased a third home with a conventional mortgage. But that third home happened to have an ADU in it. And so now he lives upstairs in the two-bedroom one portion of his house, and the ADU is downstairs, and I manage it for him as a short-term rental, and he makes like half of his mortgage with it. So between the money he's making off of his other his duplex, his second property is being paid for by the tenant. I believe he's breaking about even on that after all of the taxes, fees, and um his, other, his, proper, his property manager costs. I don't manage that property. I only do short-term, mid-term rentals. Um, it, but he's he's making decent money and not to mention acquiring so much equity. Mm -hmm. he, so All starting with the use of his VA home loan eligibility wisely. Yep. So it's a really cool product. In summary, VA loans are great. We're big fans. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are great. They are a great tool to just... Own a home. If you, it, they are a great tool to own a home, but even better, they are a great tool to get you propelled forward to own multiple homes. If you have a plan and a strategy and can execute to it with help and guidance from your realtor and mortgage friends. So if you liked this podcast and you want to learn more, more about VA loans, please like, subscribe, send us a message. Ask with me your questions. I'll tell you everything you need to know about a VA home loan. Yep. If oh. you are a vet listening to this and you think you might want to buy a home anywhere in the country, I highly recommend you go to theladdercast.com and click on work with Shannon, submit a loan application and set up a, a phone call with her so that you can see what your VA loan eligibility is and learn more about your opportunities with a VA home loan. And if you are looking to purchase a home with a VA home loan here in Portland, Oregon, or any home in Portland, Oregon, I would love to help you. I also cover Southern Washington. If you're wanting to uh, take advantage of the tax benefits of Washington while living, while all of the amenity benefits of Portland are right by you. So sounds like a winner. It sure does. And if you're located elsewhere in the country, I have a very large network of other realtors. I would love to refer you to someone who does what I do in your area. So Thank you for listening to The Laddercast today. Check us out online at theladdercast.com and feel free to drop us a, a message. We'd love to hear from you. There you go. All right. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.